Welcome to Legacy Ice Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the concept of relative humidity that is used in climatology and geography. So what basically is relative humidity? What in general is the concept of humidity? What is the use of understanding this concept? How do we use that in the climatology and what is the significance of this? So first of all, if we try to understand the concept by definition, humidity in simple terms can be described as the amount of water vapor or amount of moisture that is present in a particular air mass or a particular air parcel. Now, humidity itself can be defined in three different ways. The first method of defining humidity is what we refer as absolute humidity. Absolute humidity refers to the mass of water vapor which we calculate in grams in per volume of the air parcel that means per unit volume of air parcel how many grams of moisture is present if we try to define humidity in this particular manner it is what we call as absolute humidity and obviously its unit will be gram per meter cube or kilograms per meter cube the second way of explaining humidity is what we refer as specific humidity which is basically a unitless or dimensionless concept and this simply defines the humidity in the term of ratio of the grams of water vapor or moisture present in per thousand grams of the air parcel or the air mass. So basically that is why since it is gram per kilogram or kilogram per kilogram it basically becomes a dimensionless now. The third way which is most relevant and most used way is what we call as relative humidity. Now relative humidity is very very important because it factors into also the amount of water vapor that can be hold that can be held by that particular air parcel at different different temperature however determining the value of relative humidity becomes much more complicated and because the vapor density we also have to take into consideration the vapor pressure vapor density wet bulb temperature and the dry wet, dry bulb temperature which we are going to talk about in the later part of the video overall however it is a simple concept as a weather phenomena goes, as a weather phenomena concern, but it has significant far-reaching consequences for how we must take care of ourselves on an individual basis, whether it is a hot day or the wet day. So the first significance of the relative humidity comes into picture because it is on the basis of RH, it comes into, we can understand that how body's heating or cooling mechanism will work or to what extent body's heating or cooling mechanism can cope with the actual temperature, actual humidity in the atmosphere. To understand this, simply we can understand like this. If we talk about it is a very, very hot day, in that situation, what happens? The body start to sweat and as the sweat is liquid, so due to high temperature prevailing outside in the atmosphere, the sweat further evaporates. Now, when the sweat is evaporating, it is basically converting from liquid stage to a vapor stage and this transformation requires energy. And thus, when the sweat evaporates from the body surface, it takes away the energy from the body surface, resulting into the cooling of the body. And that is how the body's cooling mechanism works. But the problem is that if the temperature is very, very higher, but at the same time, if relative humidity is very higher, that means the actual amount of water vapor that is present in the atmosphere is also very high. That means air around the body is already saturated. That means the water and that is coming on the body surface in the form of sweat will not be able to evaporate easily and thus it will keep on your body will keep on sweating but the sweat will not evaporate resulting into a feeling of drench or feeling of what we can call as perspiration and thus you will feel very very uncomfortable so that is where relative humidity understanding relative humidity and what is the actual rh comes into picture the second is as you have discussed it determines the extent of sweating in the summer if rh is very very higher you will profusely sweat without evaporation while if RH is very very low, your sweat will be able to cool your body easily. And third is RH also is a one of the major factors how the probability of rainfall is determined over any area. Because higher the relative humidity, better are the chances of rainfall. Generally, if RH exceeds 100%, in that case we have very very high probability of rainfall because the air becomes super saturated in the state. That means it cannot hold any more water vapor than it is holding at, uh, at that particular point of time. Now, if you try to understand about the high relative humidity, so we have already talked about that how high relative humidity help in the sweating of the body and how it help in what we can say lower evaporation from the body surface, thus minimizing the cooling impact of your uh, body's uh, sweating mechanism and also your cold temperature will not be reduced. And if your body's cold temperature is not able to reduce, then what will happen? It, uh, very soon, it becomes very, very deadly if you are uh, living in that kind of environment for a long period of time. 
Overall, if you talk about the value of RH, general value of 30 to 60 percent is considered to be the comfortable for people. And generally, we have two different types of situations when we can change or we can uh, acclimatize as per the relative humidity. The first is if the environment have very low level of humidity or a relative humidity, that means it is very, very dry kind of environment. And if it is very dry kind of environment, that is also not good for body because in that case, you see the many problems have, many people have problems of, uh, like we can say, blood that comes out from the ear and the nose because what happens in such high temperature and dry air, the uh, blood pressure becomes higher than the surrounding atmosphere and that is when we use humidifiers to make sure that humidity remains within the range of 30 to 60 percent. The second situation is when the humidity level or relative humidity level is very very higher. In that case, the fan will help move the air around you and help sweat evaporate better which it will not be able to evaporate by itself because already humidity is very very higher around the atmosphere. So, these are two different extremes how we can actually minimize the impact of higher or lower relative humidity. The best humidity interval is 30 to 60 percent for human body. However, we have to make sure that in both the cases whether there is high RH situation or there is a low RH situation, drinking water becomes very very critical for survival. Second, if we try to understand that what does basically RH imply in the physical sense. So, in physical sense, if you try to understand the relative humidity, what we can understand that if you talk about a particular parcel of air, if you increase the temperature of that air, it will be able to hold more water vapor, more moisture as compared to the colder air. So, at the same absolute humidity level, the relative humidity of the warmer air will be lower as compared to that of the cooler air because relative humidity is inversely proportional to the humidity capacity. Humidity capacity is what we have written in the first statement that is the um, a total amount of water vapor that can be accommodated in a particular air parcel. So, as the air becomes warmer, humidity capacity increases and as the humidity capacity increases, the relative humidity decreases and that is why we are saying that warmer air will have low RH as compared to the colder air. It is very very similar to analogous example of saying that we have two different vessels which can hold the same amount of water but just that the bigger vessel will be less full than the smaller vessel because the volume of the bigger vessel is larger here and the same situation exists in the air where warmer air will have larger volume as compared to the colder air. And that is why for example you talk about Chennai's weather, Chennai had an absolute humidity of 70 percent for example or at 2.30 pm on April 23 but its relative humidity was much lower around 60 degrees Celsius because it had an ambient temperature of 32 degrees Celsius and since the temperature is very very higher RH becomes slightly lower than the absolute humidity. If we have to calculate the humidity we can understand that also the relative humidity does not rise in one to one manner as compared to the change in temperature because if you look at this particular graph what we can see that RH increases at much more faster rate if the temperature is rising. That means what I am trying to say if you look at this particular diagram that between minus 20 to plus 20 you have overall change in temperature of 40 degrees Celsius but RH is just simply increasing by 10 percent or we can say in this particular uh, chart by 10 unit but again between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius RH increasing by almost we can say 30 percent or 30 units. So, overall what we can say that temperature is not, RH is not directly proportional to temperature change but as the temperature becomes higher and higher, the rate at which RH changes with change in temperature also is much more greater. Now, the next question comes that how can we measure the value of relative humidity? So, for that what we have to understand the two terms that is the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. So, how what we can do on an experimental basis is you have a thermometer, you take the thermometer and you make sure the thermometer is dry and then you measure the ambient temperature of the surroundings. At the same time you take the other temperature, other thermometer and you put a cotton wick around this particular bulb of the thermometer and you wait this cotton wick and then you wait for the uh, air in the cotton wick to dry out and then you measure the temperature from this particular thermometer. And the difference in the reading that comes is used for measuring the relative humidity. And this is the chart that you see in this particular uh, slide is used for measurement of the relative humidity. For example, if you look at this, on one side you have the dry bulb temperature and on the other side you have the wet bulb temperature. So, if you look at the dry bulb temperature, so if you look at the dry bulb temperature, what we are seeing is that for example, if dry bulb temperature is suppose 20 degrees Celsius and difference between the wet bulb temperature and dry bulb temperature is suppose 6 degrees Celsius, in that case the relative humidity will be about 51 percent. 
So that is how by measuring the temperature difference and measuring the drive temperature from this particular chart, you can actually get the relative humidity. One other way which is used by climatologists all across the world is instrument that is called as psychrometer. And psychrometer is also used to measure the relative humidity because it has a basically it is has it is a system which is made up of uh, thermometer that measures drive temperature, wettable temperature, the difference between them. And on the basis of this particular chart, it correlates the value to give you the final output. The other way of measuring RH is medical in nature, where by simple formula, relative humidity is defined as the saturated total vapor pressure of the air divided by saturated vapor pressure into 100. And the vapor pressure, as we can see from this particular chart, can simply be calculated by this formula that is 6.11 into 10 to power 7.5 into TD, where TD is the dry blood temperature divided by 237.3 plus TD, that where again TD is the dry blood temperature. In the same case, if you want to calculate the saturated vapor pressure, you replace the dry blood temperature with the weightable temperature. And by then putting the value in this formula, you can calculate the relative humidity at that particular point of time. So, question comes that why wet bulb temperature or what kind of significance does, does wet bulb temperature and its calculation have? So, first of all, if you want to define dry bulb temperature simply the temperature that is in the ambient atmosphere which you are calculating directly, while wet bulb temperature refers to basically the lowest temperature a surface which can be your skin or any surface can reach when water finally evaporates from it. And basically, if relative value, relative humidity is 100%, that means air is in the saturated state, the wet bulb temperature generally is equal to the dry bulb temperature. And here it comes, the significance of the wet bulb temperature comes because what we observe that a wet bulb temperature in an environment of 32 to 35 degrees Celsius or higher can be quickly lethal even if you are not doing any physical activity or are in the shade. So many people have this uh, misconception that if it is very hot outside and if you are in the shade, you are basically safe. It basically depends on the value of relative humidity and the liquid temperature also. And depending on that, that is why doctors suggest in the summertime that you should always keep yourself hydrated. So at least even one study has shown that even a wet bulb temperature of more than 29 degrees Celsius can be very, very dangerous for the human body. So anyway, what we can see in the conclusion that the climate crisis is rendering heat waves as we have seen across in the uh, winter times in the European regions, we have the heat waves that has let the temperature to not drop to a significant degree as we see in the earlier years. And in this year also, the entire Asia is suffering from the heat wave in the summer season. So due to the climate crisis that has risen mainly due to the anthropogenic activities, heat waves are becoming more common, more frequent, more spread out and more potent, especially over Asia and especially over the Indian subcontinent. And the debate that whether today's most impactful heat waves could have occurred in pre industrial climate or not has been actually a traditionally a central focus of attribution research. But now it is significantly becoming an obsolete question. It is becoming kind of outdated question because the situation is the problem already has arise. A problem already has arrived. Now, instead of focusing on that, what we could have done in past, we should focus on the future. And thus, the next frontier for the attribution sciences is to inform adaptation decision making in the face of unprecedented future heat rather than blaming our past actions. So, that is all about this particular issue. In this particular video, I hope you understood about the concept of relative unity and how it is important to understand the impact of weather on the human body. So, that is all for this particular video. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and let's subscribe to our channel for more such content. Thank you very much.